Very good morning. I am Shilpa. Welcome you all to the NCERT live phone in program. Every day we all face several problems, but how a computer can help us? This is what we are going to learn today. And this is why our today's topic of discussion is problem solving using computers. And to discuss this in the studio we have Dr. Rizal Kareem Barbhuya, who is designated as an assistant professor at Department of Education in Science and Mathematics in NCERT. I welcome you sir on today's show. Thank you. So let's proceed to understand our today's topic of discussion. Uh, Dr. Kareem, today we are discussing about problem solving using computers. So yeah. what exactly we are going to learn about computers? Uh, good morning to all. Uh, the topic that we have chosen today is uh, problem solving using computer. So uh, we, 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 we know that computers are used in different fields. Supposing in communication, we use computer for email, for mobile phone, for sending text, all those things. Computers are used in word processing, we use them for processing word files, spreadsheets. Right. Computers are used in business applications like uh, payment system and all those things. Computers are used in uh, uh, banking systems, in e-ticketing and in almost in every other field, right? Almost every field, computer has got application in medical field medical device field and all other fields. So, computer is being used in all, all almost every field as right. I am saying, but uh, we need to understand how a computer works and how computer is being useful in so many different fields. So, we, uh, to discuss on that, we, we first need to understand is that as I have already listed you so many application areas of computer, but Computer science is not, not something to deal with uh, application of IT services or, or you can say computer science has nothing to do with uh, repairing of a computer or, or IT support, back support. No, computer science does not mean browsing internet okay. or, or playing video games, no. In all these fields, computer is simply basically a tool, right? Computer is being used as a tool to solve all those, I mean, I mean applications. Right. So, computer science focuses on problem solving. The okay. defined term, term which is our top, today's discussion topic is computer science deals primarily with solving problems. Hmm. Problems means how it is solved, computer science solves using by, by, by developing applications or softwares. So, computer science tries to understand what a problem is, how mm -hmm. it can be solved and uh, what softwares it can be developed. So, computer science we can say is basically the, uh, the study, theory, design and application of software and uh, software system, right. So, that is that is a uh, uh, computer science because of why, why I had to make this clarification is like uh, sometimes people make confusion with computer right. science to be uh, um, word processing is a computer science. No, in word processing you are simply merely using computer as a tool, hmm. right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, we are discussing problem solving. So, what exactly this problem solving is? Okay. Uh, a problem can be anything. Hmm. I want to uh, remember my monthly spending on groceries right. over a year. Mm -hmm. So, that is a problem in my hand. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to remember the, the grocery bills which I, I have spent on purchasing grocery over a year or period of over a period of time, right. Or, or we know we, we solve in mathematics sometimes complex numerical problems or simple problems. Mm -hmm. of, so, all those are different kind of problems. Right. Right. Uh, just to explain in more detail what a problem can be, let me take an example. Supposing I had birthday recently and uh, my aunt sent me a birthday uh, gift. Present, right. Right. So, so uh, now I decide to say a thanks to her, hmm. my aunt. So, so how I can have, this is a problem in my hand, I want to say thanks to my aunt for sending me the presentation. So, how do I do that? Uh, I have several ways. Right. I can, I can, I can pick up my phone, call her and say, say thanks for the gift. Uh, I can mail her, I can, I can text her. Can send postcards. Yeah, of course, I can send a postcard <laughs> as well or, or otherwise I can, I can take a vehicle, drive to her place right. and personally meet her and say thanks right. to her. Now, now see here, I had a problem and I have figured out different ways how I can solve this problem, right? right? Hmm. But while figuring out, if you, if you realize that I have figured out different tools or different ways, mm -hmm. like my postcard as you said, my email, 
my phone call or my personal visit. These are different tools, but I, I have to decide while solving the problem which tool I am going to use. Right? <laughs> that is a major confusion most of the time also. Yeah. Which yeah, tool to yeah, use. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so you need to be well, well equipped with the qualities or requirements to, to judge and decide which out of the given options of tools you are going to use. <laughs> Why I am, I am taking this example is because as I am saying computer is being used as a tool to solve problems. Right. So, computer itself does not solve a problem. <laughs> I as a human being, you call me a pro application developer, programmer, I have a given problem in my hand. I have to design a solution hmm. and I have to choose as I said out of the given options, which option I am going to choose to implement, to solve, solve my problem and then use a computer to, to solve that problem. <laughs> now, when I am talking about using computer to solve a problem, uh, let us first understand basic core functioning of a computer. Uh, as you can see, uh, as you can see on my screen here, uh, we are trying to give you a brief overview of how a computer works, right? We, we many of us may know that a computer is a is a data processing hmm. device. What it does is it takes some value or data is input, process it, and then output it, right? And accordingly, we know some input devices like we can give data through keyboard, we can give data through many ways. While playing a video game. You, you, are, you are playing using the joystick or the controlling device. So, what you are doing is you are giving the input to the computer that I want my game uh, avatar or the character to move left, left, right, take a jump and all those things. So, those are basically inputs. So, those inputs are data for the computer which it processes and then gives you output. The output can be in the form of action or as you can see in this uh, on the screen in this diagram, the output can be stored on a storage device or it can be uh, out, output as, a, as a, if it is a text file, image file or video file, it can be mm -hmm. output on different output devices. Okay. Right? So, uh, this process part, where exactly it get processed in the whole flow chart you have mentioned process. So, where is it exactly get processed? Uh, process, we, we know something called CPU, central right. processing unit or sometimes we call it processor. Right. Uh, central processing unit of the computer as is some people also uh, sometimes call it a brain of the computer right right so so it has that electronic circuitry which which understands as well i'll, I'll uh, cover in the later part in details understands some of the instructions given to it in in the specified language so mm -hmm. if i tell a computer in my natural english language you don't understand we have different uh, standardized ways to instruct a computer and the processor understands my instruction and then it creates the in okay. work right so to, to, to give a further more detailed idea about problem solving, uh, let me let me take you back to the problem solving in mathematics. Uh, we, know, we, we we all solve different mathematical problems, right? So so if you, if you try to analyze, basically we do three core things in mathematical problem solving. Uh, first is formulating. Right. Uh, formulation is like I have a problem in my hand, and I want to solve it hmm. in mathematics. So, I, 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 I try to analyze it and try to figure it out. Hmm. Out of the so many mathematical formulas and applications and tools, which are the formulas which I can I can use to solve this particular problem, right? So, formulate a problem, study my problem in details and then find out ki of the all the formulas available in mathematics or at least the ones I have learned so far, how which which of them are going to be useful to apply in this in the my in my case. Right. And so, once I figure it out, the second step is employing the formula in mathematics, that is what we do. Once we know that these are the formulas I am going to apply mm -hmm. to solve this mathematical or numerical problem, then I apply the formula and again I do the calculation and step by step we derive the solution. And once we solve it out, the final is interpretation. Like I had a problem, I have found a result, so I try to interpret it. What does it mean? I had a, I had a mathematical problem, I have solved it, I have got a result. Can I correlate it to something else or what it indicates to me? What should I understand out of it? Right? So, in mathematics, we do three things as I see. Computer science takes the idea of problem solving basically from mathematics. Right? So, in computer science, the study of problems, analyzing different possible solutions. Hmm. And then out of the solution, all the available solutions 
picking up one solution which I believe will be the a uh, better one out of the lot given options mm -hmm. and then implementing the solution. I am okay. just giving a super brief overview, I will talk about them in greater details in the, in the, in the in next few Even minutes. This thing is also was coming in my mind like why particularly computer for problem, sol problem solving as you have forced that there are several options available, but by, why particularly computer? Yeah, uh, see we humans are, are solving problems even before existence of computers, right? We have been we have been solving problems sometimes by writing, sometimes by by in our memory and right. and doing this, right? Mm -hmm. And and doing many many routine works on our own without using computers. But as we know, is that computer is, is such a device which can do some of the task human tasks far more efficiently, with far more accuracy, and sometimes at a much faster pace than a com a human being can do. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are very much interested. Which are the things we can we can do using computers? computers? Which are the routine tasks at least, or which are the complex tasks, otherwise difficult or challenging tasks we can do more and more uh, uh, processing, pro assembly processing in in, a, in the manufacturing industry. Mm -hmm. So so before these um, devices were and computer technologies and robotics were were invented, people have been levers have been used in large numbers to to do packing and all those things. But with the invent of computers, now that you you apply a robotic arms and all those things right. and, and you control everything with the software right hmm. so that's why uh, people are largely interested in 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 problem solving using computers, computers. right okay uh, here i would like to uh, highlight some of the key points uh, as you can see on my screen i have i have tried to present some of the key points uh, in use uh, problem solving using computers so here i am introducing a technical term called algorithm I hmm. will explain in in, uh, in next few minutes what is an algorithm is, but my viewers are supposed to understand is that an algorithm is basically a plan, a plan for developing or a, uh, a solution or, or you can say plan for solving a problem. Okay? So, a person is supposed to design an algorithm, right? Uh, a human being is supposed as I said computer is merely a tool. Hmm. So, somebody a human person has to design an algorithm and then as I also said, a computer does not understand our human lang natural languages, right. it, it has it has got its own language to understand. So, uh, someone should again a human being's role comes into one has to translate this algorithm, the plan into a computer program. A okay. computer program is what a computer understands, mm -hmm. right? A program is nothing but a set of instructions through which we tell a computer ki what are the things you are I'm ex expecting you to do. Right, that that is the thing we we instruct the computer using a program. Hmm. So three things so far as I have said is algorithm. Uh, I have to design a plan, and then someone has to design uh, uh, algorithm based on my plan, mm -hmm. and then someone again has to convert that algorithm into a program. Okay, and uh, of course as I said, a computer is nothing but a tool that will be used to implement my plan. And uh, as I have already covered, but a computer program is nothing but a set of instructions, right? Okay. So, algorithm is something like how we are going to solve a problem using a computer. Mm, yeah, yeah. Algorithm is formal, defined, step by step procedure for our human understanding. Okay. I, I am as a solution developer, I have a problem at hand, I mm -hmm. want to devise a solution. So, I make first of all a broad plan. Okay. A plan how I am going to approach. Mm -hmm. Based on that plan, I, I do further detailed analysis and I come out with a step by step procedure, mm -hmm. the way I expect my com uh, a computer to carry out the things. So, the detailed step by step instruction in a human understandable form okay. is nothing but a algorithm. Okay. Right? But an algorithm directly if you give it to a computer, it will not understand anything. Mm. So, al an algorithm has to be again written into a program. Program means using a language which understands computer. Computer so, understands it. Yeah. So, okay. so that is uh, we, we all know that we call it a programming language. Mm -hmm. so there are n number of programming languages and uh, I am not going to uh, cover into all those details how uh, what are the high level languages, low level languages and right. how a computer understands programming hmm. languages. Okay. So, having said that now I would like to uh, discuss some of the problem solving steps. So, as you can again see on my screen, 
I am trying to present you a brief broad idea about what are the, what are the broadest steps that we follow hmm. while solving a problem using computers. So, the first step I have listed here is understanding the problem, right. I uh, will explain each one of them in detail. Okay. Then once you understood the problem at hand, then you develop a solution called algorithm. And as I said, you should not stick to only one algorithm, you should try to explore what are the different ways you can solve a problem? Mm -hmm. Supposing a problem is to calculate or to identify whether a number is prime or not. So, supposing you have figured out one way to check whether a number is prime or not. So, that does not mean you straight ways figure out and start developing a program. You need to explore can there be a better or alternative way I can check whether a number is prime or not. So, you first explore all the possibilities that uh, the, that what does that mean is that you will be you, you will be able to come out with two three different possibilities or two three different ways to solve a problem. <laughs> but out of that you need to identify as I have said the three keywords here identifying prioritizing and selecting alternatives for a solution. You need to identify which of the proposed solution we are going to do. You need to do prioritize priority in terms of one algorithm may take lesser time than other. On the other hand, another algorithm which may take a bit larger time, but requires less memory and right. all those things. So, you do priorities some, some algorithms have some pros and cons or some limitations, some advantages out of those given options you need to prioritize your, your, your hmm. uh, priorities the way you want the program to run and then selecting one of the alternative from the given algorithms. Then you implement it and then you follow up on the solution. Right. So, so yeah. Yeah. Why don't we understand the first steps, like understanding the problem? Yeah. Yeah. In the in the coming coming few uh, minutes, we in this session we are going to explain or cover in details about what are the steps that we need to follow to solve a problem. So as I said, mm -hmm. my first problem, I mean first step is identifying the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. So as you can see uh, on my screen. The first thing that we need to do while solving a problem is understanding the problem, right. Mm. So, understanding a problem uh, means two things. First, you need to define a problem and then you need to analyze a problem. So, defining a problem, why, why you, you, someone may ask, I know my problem, why should I define it? No. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we feel like we want to do it certain things, but sometimes in our mind probably we are not fully clear what exactly do we want. What exactly do we want and how exactly do we want the computer to do? Why it what, what, what happens is that unless you are very clear in your mind what you want, you end up developing a computer program hmm. which, which behaves or gives you output not the way you expected because while designing or defining the problem, you were not clear what exactly you wanted, right. What exactly you wanted means what are the parameters that your program should control, mm -hmm. what are the data sources through which your program is going to get inputs, what processing you expect the computer to do and in what form you want the computer program or the algorithm to give you output, right. So, figuring out all those things is nothing but defining the problem. Okay, uh, here is one question, uh, what if a person is having a multiple problems at a time related to the same thing. Let us say there is one category and under which there is a sub category, mm -hmm. then how that person is going to analyze that problem? Uh, the, 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 top, the, the question that you have put is, is uh, uh, again a larger topic in the context of problem solving, mm -hmm. which I am planning to cover it detail in maybe in some other session. Okay. Just to give a brief idea is, when you have a very large complex problem mm -hmm. and you want to solve it. So, so it is not very easy to straight away sit down and take a pen and paper and writing those steps of called algorithms. What you do is since the problem is bigger very large before before developing an algorithm you try to break it down, okay. break it down into different manageable chunks of sub problems as you mm -hmm. said. So, what we do technically we, we call this in the context of problem solving what we call this is decomposition. Okay. So, given a big problem, we try to decompose or break it down the, the problem, bigger problem into smaller, smaller problem units, sub problems. Okay. Then what we do is, we try to, if that sub problem again is very weak, we try to do same, follow same process and break that sub problem into further sub problems. Mm -hmm. 
and then each manageable small set of problem we try to find a solution of that and then each one of the sub problem we solve and then we go up the hierarchy and then we come try to combine relate the solutions of all the sub problems together and then that is how we, we, we try we Get solve the bigger problem. Right, right, right? Right. So, coming back to understanding the problem, uh, the first part we have decided and def explained or discussed so far is defining the problem. Right. The second part is of course, analyzing the problem. So, as you can see on my screen here, uh, analyzing the problem involves some of the steps like uh, to determine yeah, the, the steps of understanding a problem I have listed on my, on my computer screen as you can see. Uh, to understand analyze the problem, we have to uh, determine what is given. Hmm. We have a problem we want to solve it, so have we have to we have to determine what is given and what must be done. What is given means what are the things already clear to me, right? What 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 is clear to me uh, in this problem that these these things are available to me and these are the things which I want a computer to do. So, formally speaking, we you you call them what are the input or data are available to you. Okay. Right. What are the sources from which your computer program is get to data and in what form those data will be entered into the computer? What aspect of the problem these data or the uh, input parameters represent? Okay. And then what further do you need? Are, are they sufficient to solve the problem or do, do, do you do you um, do you do you and want more inputs from some other source maybe you, you need to calculate intermediately in some steps finding out something from the data given data then take out a result and then the, the result step again you input into the uh, different step. So, all those things like what are the available things what else further do I need Maybe in terms of data in terms of other things input to the computer mm -hmm. then you decide you, 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 you do not don't focus as of now while analyzing the problem about processing. Mm -hmm. Processing you are going to figure out later while defining the algorithm. Right. So, as of now you are understanding the problem through analysis. Hmm. So, analyzing a problem in greater details, what are the different parameters, whether whether I could understand understood the problem statement very clearly, what are the sources from which I am going to get the data and what I expect the computer to give me. Right. right? So, what is my expected output? So, these, these things together uh, gives you a brief idea about analyzing the hmm. problem. Uh, once you have you have understood the problem, you have analyzed it. Next comes, of course, is the main part called developing an algorithm. So uh, here, here I have I have uh, in my screen as you can see, I have tried to define an algorithm. So an algorithm is a step-by-step procedure to perform an operation, which will give a desired result if followed correctly. Hmm. See, see the important word is if followed correctly, and algorithm have a definite beginning and a definite end and a finite number of steps. So, what does that mean? That means, my steps should be very precisely and clearly defined. That first I should do this, then followed by this, then this, then this, then this, if this happens go that way, if something else happens go that way. Hmm. So, what my computer is supposed to do, I am I'm, I'm clearly able to define a blueprint right. for that. Mm -hmm. right? And the steps, the number of steps should be very finite. It should, algorithm should be able to stop somewhere. It should not happen that an algorithm, there comes a situation where my computer program is, is running on an on a, on a infinite loop. Right. So, that will be a fault of my algorithm because mm -hmm. my algorithm should definitely have an end. And the number of steps which I am running for my computer to do is should be finite number of steps, mm. right. So, this next slide as you can see is. Uh, here I have to taken an example of riding a bicycle to reach a destination. Mm -hmm. uh, I am taking a daily life example to explain the algorithm. So, what we do some of these steps are not fixed. Some of us may take a very bearing steps. Some of the steps possible one possible set of algorithm which I have tried to figure out is supposing I have a bicycle I take it out from my stand. I sit on the seat of the bicycle I start paddling right. I use brakes whenever required and then of course, I stop on reaching the destination. Mm -hmm. So, this is a very simple easy way to understand algorithm in our daily life. right? If you ask me algorithm to find square of a number. Okay. So, what I will do if I, uh, if I try to design a computer program which should be able to figure out a square of a number. Hmm. 
So, the, my computer I should be able to give it input the number for which I want to do the find the square. So, that input is my given number mm -hmm. and the computation which my computer will do is multiply that number given number with it itself and of course, then print it either mm -hmm. store it or print it mm -hmm. right. Uh, as you can see in my computer screen another algorithm that I have taken is which which children do in mathematics is long division right. We are we are given a bigger number and we are given a, a smaller number we, we try to divide the bigger number by the smaller number right. right. And I am not going to explain the steps which hmm. we know like we take one number which we take and, and then try to um, uh, divide it and then we find the remainder then we again bring down the another next bigger number then we divide it and all those things right. So, these are very basic examples to understand what is an algorithm. So, as we can see again as I in, in the examples algorithms are nothing nothing but the steps right one after uh, another. As like school student what I feel is it is actually difficult to decide what kind of algorithm they gonna use to solve any particular problem. So, how a school student can actually think of algorithm? Uh, as I as I am trying to explain with this basic mathematical examples mm -hmm. uh, developing algorithmic algorithm development skill is 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 very challenging it comes with experience. Okay. So, you should not straight away take a bigger problem and start writing an algorithm mm -hmm. as a school student probably you can take uh, consider and take up with these smaller examples of mathematics as I said. For example, let me give you an example supposing we have a problem that we want to classify a person as let us say teenager mm -hmm. as an adult or as a uh, younger hmm. child. Hmm. Supposing we decide a criteria like if a person is less than 13 years of age old then more probably we will call him or her a child and if that person is between 13 and let us say 19 years of mm -hmm. age let us say we want to call that person a teenager hmm. and more than 19 year old we want to call that person a adult. Hmm. So, and uh, we want to write a computer program for that. So, that whenever I, I a person I enter a value as age hmm. that computer tells me what, the, what category I fall. Hmm. So, as you can see on my computer screen for this problem situation I have tried to design an algorithm, an algorithm in the form of flow chart will I will cover later. So, we start we and give the age of the person to the computer if it is less than 13. So, these are the steps this flow chart which I have figured out is is. Hmm. basically on a daily life problem hmm. or a very simple problem numerical problem right. So, this kind of problem student can take up and then they can try to figure it out and solve solve one by one. Okay. Uh, as I have, I have taken an example of flow chart. So, it is important for me to cover uh, aspects of representation of algorithm. Right. An algorithm is basically the idea or the step by step procedure to solve a solution. Problem. How do I write an algorithm? Hmm. There should be some standard way to represent an algorithm, right? So, algorithm can be represented in two ways. One we call is a flow chart. Right. Flow chart, as I showed you hmm. in, the, in the previous example of categorization, uh, yeah, as you can see on my screen, this is a flow chart. A flow chart is nothing but a visual representation, right? A visual representation which clearly explains you the logic which, I, which goes in my mind while hmm. designing the solution, right. right? And we use certain standard symbols while developing a flow chart as you can see on my screen I have tried to list here some of the symbols here like that all uh, that oval shape are used to represent the start and stop of a solution process. Hmm. Uh, then we represent data to pra uh, parallelogram shape then a rectangle we use to describe a process step in my in my flow chart. The diamond shapes are used whenever we are going to take any decision okay. right and the arrow it, it tells me the flow of control of my mm -hmm. algorithm right. Then another aspect of representation is called pseudocode. Right. Pseudo means false. So, pseudocode is something not a real code, right. So, pseudocode is uh, for example, let me show you uh, as you can see on my on my computer screen on uh, I want to write an algorithm to calculate area and perimeter of a rectangle. So, 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 so as you can see the pseudo, pseudo code that we have written here is that we input the computer two parameters length and breadth and then we calculate area hmm. using the mathematics formula and perimeter using the other formula and hmm. we print it right. So, develop how to develop an algorithm in detail probably can be taken up in another session. Right. Yeah. 
So, today we understood about the problem solving using computers, the introductory part of it and also we understood about the algorithm. So, thank you Dr. Kareem you. for sharing such information. So, if you have any further question or any suggestion if you want to give then you can dial into our toll free number or can drop an email to us or can contact us via our social media platforms. Till then take care and keep watching Kishore Manch.